welcome to Hank's True Barbecue. It's time to do a proper offset smoker walkthrough, I thought, because uh, you have cheap offset smokers, you have expensive offset smokers. What are the differences and specifically what tweaks or cheap tricks can you apply to make your cheap offset smoker behave like an expensive one? I'm not talking about life expectancy, but like day-to-day -day function. So let's start by going through the firebox, the food chamber and the smokestack in turn, and I'll, I'll show you the differences and uh, w how, how it actually affects cooking. Uh, and you'll see if that's something you could apply to your smoker. Now when it comes to fireboxes, either they're plain or they're insulated, uh, or if they're plain, they're very, very thick material. Now, how does that make a difference? Well, the good thing about having an insulated firebox or having one with very thick, like half inch or one inch steel, is that both are very insensitive to weather conditions, like wind or rain or anything doesn't really affect the temperature. That's really good. This one's insulated, which means that it lights up very quickly because there is no real thermal mass. Also, it protects from wind, like I just said. Uh, the big difference between a solid one, which has like super thick walls, like half inch or one inch thick steel, is that the latter is, uh, has a high thermal mass, which means it evens out temperatures. Like if the fire dies down for even a minute, you know, the metal is going to release the heat to equal out everything. So that's really good. It's kind of like a fireplace, like a brick and mortar fireplace. Uh, and that's a really good thing. So those are the two differences. And you can increase thermal mass simply by like if you have a cheap offset smoker it's typically very very thin material the one thing you can do for weather conditions is to put a welding blanket on top of it it has to be a specifically a welding blanket which can take the heat but also that's going to add some protection the other thing you can do is make sure that you have some thermal mass uh, and in a cheap offset smoker the easiest way to do that is to simply put a few bricks Preferably fireproof if you can. The regular ones will work, but they're not going to last that long. Uh, but that's a really a smart way. Most of you who have ever seen or worked with the Weber Smoky Mountain know that there is a water pan in the middle. And uh, instead of putting water in, some people put sand in it. And that's the same effect really. So put a few bricks in and you should be fine. In a smaller, cheap offset smoker, it's better to put that in the food chamber, right at the beginning where the air enters the food chamber. All right, so let's move on over to the food chamber. So when it comes to the food chamber, it's good to have thick material also, or if it's insulated, but it's not as important, I would say, as for the firebox. I mean, sure, it's going to retain heat, which is good, but I th I'm more worried about wind and uh, weather conditions for a big offset smoker. So. And the reason for that is that air is moving through the smoker at quite a high pace. So there's a constant influx of hot air moving through very fast, so it doesn't have time to cool off in the same sense. So for that reason, I think it's important for life expectancy, but not so much uh, for the day-to-day -day functioning. And like I said, uh, if you have a really cheap offset smoker and need thermal mass, put some bricks right in here where the food enters. Uh, fire, sorry, the hot air enters the food chamber. Uh, also, another thing you can play with is like how hot air enters the food chamber because typically hot air rises. Well, it always does if it can. So it's very common to put in a baffle or something in between here to kind of like break off the airflow. That way you get an even temperature zone or at least more even temperature zone from top to bottom. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be better and that's really important. So try and see what you can do to redirect airflow. Now moving back to the uh, smokestack. So here it is. I made mine stainless just because it's a nice touch to the rusty look of the rest of the thing. Now you may see that as a nice like smokestack chimney where the air is being pushed out and kind of pretty but not that important. Well, I would argue otherwise. This is the most important part of the whole smoker because air isn't pushed in, it's being drawn through the whole smoker. And the thing that's doing the drawing is the chimney or smokestack. So a properly sized and dimensioned smokestack is the most important thing because that provides air, pulls air all the way through and gets you a clean burn in the firebox. So what can you do if you have a cheap offset smoker? Perhaps if you don't have welding skills, it's kind of hard to move it because it's typically located at the top. You want to have it at the bottom or at least the middle because that 
evens out temperatures in the food chamber, so that's really important. The other thing you can do is go to your local hardware store, find a similar sized pipe and simply thread it on top. Because if you lengthen the stack, most really cheap offset smokers have a tiny, tiny smokestack which doesn't create nearly enough draft. So put on whatever metal tube you can find, uh, just wire it on there, whatever you do to just make it longer and play with different lengths to see when does it start breathing properly. Because there should be a proper draft through the smoker. When you stick your arm in the food chamber, you should feel a good draft like you, the hairs on your skin rising. So. That's a real good indication. You can also get a wind meter, anometer and a measure. But overall, take a good look and, and you can watch the flames in the firebox. When they start pulling towards the food chamber, then you know you have good enough draft. So the final thing I wanted to mention is about hot spots in the smoker. How do you find them? Well, let me show you a real cheap trick that always gets the job done. The top secret sci-fi trick is called wheat crackers. These are really good because they're dead cheap. They're very light in color, so you just spread them out evenly on the grates. And that way you see when you run the smoker at high temps, which one browns the first. That's a really easy way of finding hot spots in your smoker. The same goes really well for gas grills, which tend to be, at least when you run them in like barbecue mode, with one burner on and the rest off. It's a really good trick, so. We'll get the fire started and place some crackers and check temps and see which one browns first. Now we spread out cookies evenly in various spots just to see which one browns first. So time to take a look, those two in the middle look definitely browner, so that's a little hot spot. Good to know if I need to cook a brisket just a little bit hotter, it's good to know that I can move it around. But overall it's looking very very even, so let's check the second door too. Uh, this is even better, really nice, smart, cheap trick, try this at home. As always I emphasize dry runs, I think it's really helpful. I hope those were well some helpful tips. Like I said, try adding some thermal mass by using bricks or old brake discs or whatever. Uh, add a water pan, of course. Try to redirect airflow entering the smoke, sorry, the food chamber. And see if you can't extend the stack, at least if you have a smaller cheap offset. That's going to be a big difference. All right, till next time. Thanks for watching.